to the School of Fine Woodworking. Uh, this time, this lesson, we are going to do what is called a cross halving joint, which is like that, where the two pieces go together, together like that. This is a close fitting one. So it makes whatever you like to call it a cross halving joint, a teapot stand, pot plant stand, whatever. But that technique is called a cross halving joint. Those are the two parts of it. Okay, now in the last lesson we dressed a piece of timber to a particular length which was 300 millimeters long by width and thickness. Now what I've done is I've cut those pieces down to, or that one piece down to two pieces of 145 millimeters long and I've dressed them down to about 20 mil by 20 mil thick, 40 mil wide by 20 millimeters thick. So I did that before I cut them down to 145 in length. So now we have two pieces of timber the same length, the same width, and the same thickness. They are going to be converted into a cross halving joint like that. Okay, first thing to do is to decide which way they're going to go together. That way or that way or whichever way. It doesn't make an awful lot of difference which way we go. So to start off what we need to do is to measure the center line of the two pieces. This is 145 millimeters long so the center line will be 72.5 which is there. And the same on this one 72.5, which is there. I'll just square a line across at those two points. Remember, put the pencil on the point where you want to make the line and bring the tri-square up to it. Now, those are the center lines of the two pieces. What we have to do is to mark the thickness of the timber an equal amount either side, that is half the thickness either side of the center line. Now since this thickness is 20 millimeters, we therefore mark 10 mil, 10 millimeters each side of the center line, there and there, and on this one the same, 10 mil there and 10 mil there. Now, we square the lines across the edges there, on that one, same on this one. Those lines now have to be returned down the two faces to somewhere beyond halfway across the width. So here we go, take the line from the existing lines there, just a bit beyond halfway, what we have to do is because the halving joint is exactly as it says, that is halfway across the width of the timber. What we have to do now is to mark the halfway point. That will be done with the marking gauge. Remember that from the last lesson? That is the tool which has a stem with a pin through it and a block with a thumb screw on it to set it to a particular distance. Okay, now the width of this timber is 40 millimeters, therefore, believe it or not, halfway point will be 20 mil. So we set, rather than setting the marking gauge to 20 millimeters, a, a, an accurate way of getting a halfway measurement there is to set the marking gauge to somewhere close to where you think it should be, dot the surface of the timber from that edge with the point of the pin, turn it round, and dot it from that edge. Now you've got two little holes, you may not be able to see them there, but there and there. 
they are not coinciding. So therefore you've got to adjust the setting of the marking gauge and test again. Because if you measure and, and set the marking gauge according to a measurement, you could be slightly out. This way, if the dots coincide from both sides, there and there, like those are, can you see that? The little dot mark there and the little dot mark there, they are exactly in the same spot on the timber. So that must be correctly set to halfway across that piece of timber. That's a good method of setting a halfway point using the marking gauge if it's a bit of a difficult um, uh, measurement to set to. Okay, now, all you want to do is to mark with the marking gauge between your pencil marks there and there on both sides of both pieces. So you've got to be a little bit, diff little bit careful about how far you run the line. Again, keeping it resting on that back corner of the stem. And there is the line there between the two pencil marks. Same thing from this side. And on the other piece, the same thing. Again, confirm the line with the pencil. Now the waste, that is what you're taking out, is this bit here on this one, and this bit here on this one. We're going to make the basic cut with the hand saw, the bench of the uh, tenon saw, but we're going to do it well inside the pencil mark. Back to the bench hook. Inside the line. Two or three mil inside the line. But right down to the marking gauge line. In fact, I think I'll do this in the vise because I might start cutting the bench hook. down as far as the marking gauge line. There we are. And again, inside, that is on the waist side of the line. Okay. Again, not much, not much pressure downwards because of the soil take it through okay. anyway. Now we've got the, two, the four saw cuts ready uh, inside the waistline to be chopped away with a chisel. The technique is to hold the piece of timber against the stop of the bench hook and guide the chisel onto the timber with your left hand and provide the power behind the chisel with the ball of your thumb with your right hand. Just a chamfer, that is cut at an angle the bulk of the waste away, little by little. Back to within a couple of mil of your bottom line, the marking gauge line. On one side, turn it over, same thing from the other side. bulk of the waste taken away, there's still a little pyramid of timber waste in there, so what you do is come straight down onto it and chop it away like that.
almost back to your line, but not quite. Not a bad idea to come in from both sides to be sure that you don't come out behind your line on the other side. Now you can come back onto your line, halfway through, and back from the other side, also halfway through. Just a little bit to be cleaned out in the middle. There you go. That's pretty well flat through on that bottom surface. Same as the other one, take it back little by little now halfway through halfway through and then there's a little bit to be taken out at the middle Okay, now the socket that we've made here is too wide, it's too narrow rather, for the thickness of the timber that has to fit into it. So now what we have to do is to pair these walls back to the pencil mark until the other piece fits. Using the bench hook in a slightly different uh, capacity and some clamps, it's easier to take the, pair these walls back so you can get at it from the end of the timber like this. So I've got it set up on here with the bench hook clamped to the bench and also in the vise. And the piece of timber itself, the workpiece, clamped to the stop of the bench hook. Okay, now, what we have to do is to pair these walls back until the other piece of timber fits the other half of the joint. So, don't try and take the full cut right the way across in one hit. Take about half or even less, and don't go back to your line straight away either. The difficulty is to get the chisel cut exactly parallel to the vertical line so that you don't slip off or undercut. In some timbers it's quite difficult to get a clean cut because if it's soft it will fold up in front of the chisel, which is what this is tending to do but it's getting a, a reasonably clean cut, so I'll keep going with it. Now, let's see how we're going as far as fitting the other piece of timber is concerned. 
is still too tight, so we've got to come back a little bit more. And just about back to my line there, there's a little bit more to come off here. So this time I'm going to take a cut right the way across the whole thickness of the timber. That's a tight fit. I'm going to leave it at that for the moment and work on the other piece. You can see, even though that was a sharp chisel, you can see the rough surface on the inside there where on some timbers, as with this one, which I think is a Fijian cedar, um, it folds up in front of the chisel and tends to tear out a bit. Right, having um, paired the walls back and test it with the other piece to see if it's fitting, that's a nice clean tight fit. But it's worth noting that the, the walls that you've just paired on this particular type of timber, if you can get <clears throat> in there and have a look, it's not a very clean cut. It's, it's indicative of the coarseness of the texture of this piece of timber which uh, makes it difficult to make a clean chisel cut surface. Its other half is much the same, but at least they are fitting neatly and you can actually get a halving joint together that way. Come together and they're flush. If you look at another one that I did some other time, <coughs> this is silver ash. It's an Australian timber, rainforest timber incidentally but it's as clean as the whistle on those inside surfaces which means that it pairs very cleanly with the chisel. That seems to have gone together pretty well. There's a little bit of roughness on the inside of the joint there but the technique I think is fairly well covered. Now the last thing we have to do is to cut the chamfers, on, shave the chamfers on the corners. So when you can pull it apart you put the two pieces together, making sure that you've got them up the right way. Not both sockets down or both sockets up, but one down and one up, because that's the way the joint goes together, if you want to get the chamfer on the two top surfaces only. Put them together, measure 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters back and square a line across on each of these corners. Also, 10 millimeters down on the end. Now, it'll be easier to do that in the vise market this way, holding the piece in the vise. 10 millimetres down from the same surface. 
And when you haven't got much to lean the square against because it's only a narrow piece of timber, use the inside of the blade like that. Having marked 10 millimeters down uh, and across from each corner, correct corner, now I can join those two marks on each side with a ruler, which will in fact be at 45 degrees. Okay, back to the bench hook. Set the piece against the stop and hold the saw at about 45 degrees, that is parallel with the pencil mark you've just marked. All we're doing is taking off the bulk of the waste at the moment. We'll be planing it down the rest of the way. Now we can put the two pieces together in the vise with the corners lined up and the surface you're going to plane which is the 45 degree chamfer more or less horizontal. Here we are back with the plane and hold it slightly on the skew. You must plane in this direction of course you can't plane back that way because that will be very much against the grain and it'll tear out. So it's got to be in this direction. Lift off every now and again to see how you're going with the surface, to see whether it's in line with the two pencil marks or the four pencil marks that you've made here. There we go. That's that end. There we have it. Chamfers completed on the four corners, that is the four upper corners of the joint. The whole thing goes together and forms a neat cruciform. One other point to be made, and that is about sanding. The last thing that you need to do is to clean the whole thing up using sandpaper and a block. You can sand the two pieces separately using a cork block and to start off with 120 grit paper. And what you're aiming to do is to get rid of any surface marks, pencil marks and so on, that may be left on the workpiece. Bearing in mind that the more you sand, the looser the joint is going to get because what you're doing in effect is making the timber thinner. So you don't want to take too much off. Because a cork block is soft, it is resilient, and if you use it to sand the edges of the workpiece, it will tend to round it over because the cork will give a certain amount. So it's better to use a hard block for the edges. And use that that way to do the edges and there the chamfers trying not to lose the crispness of the surface that you've so carefully planed and also the ends now it's probably a good idea to use the vice as, a, as always as a third hand and clean it sand it across the end, again using the hard block. Do that all round on all four pieces, on both pieces. One other point to make, and that is the aris, A-R-R-I-S, which is the edge of the timber, which is still a little bit sharp. In fact, you've made it sharper because now you've sanded both surfaces. And it is still possible to pick up a splinter. Now, 
if you sand that all the way through, just taking the edge off like that, what you'll get is a line going through the joint there and there, which you don't want. You want to keep it nice and clean and crisp. So you must sand the edges when it's together. So you sand up to the cross, up to the joint, there and there, just enough to take off the hardness of the edge. And you do that all the way around. And it makes all the difference to the feel of the piece. So when you've done that, that's the piece, finished. Cross halving joint, pot plant stand, teapot stand,